Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to share with you how I extracted this distal angular wisdom tooth with very curvy roots and running into some difficulty and how I overcame that. Now, let's start by looking at the radiographs. Let's start with this uh, right bite wing. We know that this tooth is distal angular because we follow the planes of the adjacent teeth and we look at this one, it's not following the same plane. If it was following the same plane, it would be like that. But no, instead, it's going through in this direction. So we know it's disto angular. And always remember that disto angular means difficult. Now, if you also look at the OPG, we see this radiolucent band distally. And that's a sign of chronic infection. Uh, and this patient has been suffering with pericoronitis multiple episodes, which is why we're removing it. I'm not worried about uh, any nerve risk over here because you can see the tram lines uh, and there's no high risk sign features. And the curve is what worries me the most. So we know that distal angular is difficult, but when there's curves, that could increase our complexity. So just gonna make it really obvious. There's that curvy root. Now, I thought the distal root was like this. Actually, I was wrong. Uh, you'll see later, but what it actually turned out to be is that there is a little J hook on that wisdom tooth, which proved to be a little bit difficult, but we managed it and I'm happy to share the entire sequence with you now. Okay, so I start with some anesthetic for that chronic area of inflammation, which may interfere with the anesthetic. I also give a little bit of buccally into the attached gingiva and that helps to um, reflect the flap much easier. Now that the flap is, is gone, I'm gonna select my burr and handpiece. And as you know, I use an electric handpiece, speed increasing, uh, and so there's no air. And also I use a, a angled one, 45 degree angle, and that helps me to get a good position. Now I'm just gonna pause in a second and show you something. The vacation is round right about there. And the top tip I can give you is wherever, because what we're trying to do with this section is we're trying to get to the vacation of the tooth so that we can split both the mesial and the distal roots. Now, if I try to put my burr over here, if I try to put my burr over here where that buckle groove is, which is where logic would tell you to put it, then there is a, a, a risk that you run into. If you try and do it there, then usually your section ends up being too distal. It's just the way that you are. You're at the back of the mouth, you're pointing away from yourself, and then you end up making the, the cut too distal. So the top tip that was given to me by Dr. Neki Jamal is to always do your section two millimeters from where you think the vacation is. So I thought the vacation was along here, and therefore I'm gonna go two millimeters mesially, and then you'll see as I uh, do my section, I'm more likely to hit that vacation. And mo most of the secret of removing these teeth is hitting that vacation. So let's see that now. So there we are, I'm, I'm sectioning it, I'm uh, angled as I am, as I, as I told you, uh, and once I get most of the way through, I'm not gonna go all the way through the lingual, so I don't wanna be um, damaging any uh, lingual nerve there, and there we are. Now, when it comes away that easily, it's usually a sign that um, the crown's broken away, which it had, and I wasn't able to get the root out. Uh, but you'll see why I wasn't able to get the root out later. I don't think my sectioning was too bad. Uh, we do some elevation and some luxation now, so try and get that nice and loose. That's called a mesial handle. So that part of the tooth you see there is called the mesial handle. So you want to preserve that. That's why I did the section distally. Uh, pause at this stage just to explain something. The tooth, because it is distal angular, it wants to come out distally. So it wants to come out in a, a distal direction. Uh, I'm just seeing, can I get lucky with these forceps? And really, knowing about that curve, it was a bit uh, ambitious, but I thought, let me get some movement, let me get it looser. So that was my rationale at the time for getting some forceps on it. Uh, I do some rotations with the forceps. Uh, I do some buccolingual rotations, figure of eight and it's not budging, it's, uh, it's pretty solid in there. So eventually I decide that I need to do more sectioning because it wants to come distally and it's still impacted by um, the soft tissue and the ramus distally. So uh, you'll see in a moment, I'm not, getting, I'm not getting the delivery because it's still impacted distally, it's not gonna come out. So we get the burr again and we start sectioning, which you'll see that in just a second. So there we are, I'm gonna start sectioning it, get that uh, buckle flap out of the way, nicely irrigated. So I've been getting a lot of questions about which handpiece I'm using. So this is a 45 degree angled handpiece, which is just brilliant for surgical extractions, the access it gives you, but you can also use it for restorative dentistry. This is a speed increasing red band handpiece, AKA electric handpiece. Uh, and I recommend it for restorative and for surgery. It's brilliant. Uh, when I bought mine, because they were so expensive, they're like 1200 pounds in the UK, I was in Singapore 
and they were £700 on offer. So I bought two. I bought one angled and one regular, which I use more for my restorative. Uh, but now I'm pleased to, to share with you all that Chris O'Connor from Incidental Limited has started something like a revolution. He's got these same hand pieces at a greatly reduced price. So it's £660, including that, for the angled. And it's about £300 and for the uh, straight. Yes, that's right. It's a speed increasing handpiece, right? It's an electric handpiece for something like £300. It's, it's crazy. Uh, you also get to join Handpiece Club. So any issues, any repairs, you send it in to Chris. He'll sort it out. Uh, as part of the promotion, we're giving 5% off if you use the code ONIONS on incidentallimited.co.uk. That's ONIONS uh, before the end of September. So it has to be in either August or September to get 5% off. Now here's the magic thing. It works on the hand pieces and it works on everything. So next time you do your big shop on Incidental Limited for your matrix bands and materials and now hand pieces, then use the code ONIONS to get 5% off, which expires at the end of September. And again, I don't want to go all the way through. I just want to get enough. And what I tell the patient is either we get lucky and the whole tooth comes out or more than likely you're gonna break the crown. So there we are, you break the crown as expected. And now see how much easier it is to get that root out. It's now got a path of exit. It's now got the space to exit distally, which it didn't have before. And we see that lovely little curve there. But hang on, where is that distal root? We don't have a distal root. So I know that distal root's in there and you can see the, you can see the canal, you can see the pulp space just there. And what I uh, did at this point is I took a probe and I just felt, is it mobile? Have I actually got some mobility there? Because I was actually thinking, ooh, am I going to be able to take this route out? It looks a little bit tricky. But I wanted to have a plan. So a plan was, hey, check for mobility. How tough is this going to be? Uh, I'm going to give my patient a mouth prop because their jaw is probably getting a bit tired at this point. So it's a really good tip to give them a mouth prop. Uh, I'm going to get my soft tissues out of the way. I'm going to get the area nice and clean uh, so I can see. So was, and what I'm going to do is remove some bone. I'm removing some bone in that fecation region just to make it really obvious what I'm doing. So uh, this is the root that's broken away and has that little curve there. That's the root that's broken away uh, and this one's come out. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be removing the fecation bone. So I'm coming from the mesial aspect and I'm coming against the root. And I'm hoping to remove this bone in this red region here. That will help to hopefully get the tooth out. So that's where I am in terms of removing the, the bone. So as I remove a bit of bone, I'm then going to get some sort of instrument like a criers to lift it up. As you can see, I'm just going to pause it there in a moment. There. I'm just going to make it really obvious for you. So actually the root is over here. Uh, this is the second molar. Here's the bit of the, the bone that I removed. And you can't see it because the angulation, but the, the, the root space was around about there somewhere. So here's a fecation bone that I removed in that region. So I'm going to get my uh, criers in the right place. And I'm going to really just, I'm checking with the mirror. So am I in the right place? Am I in the mesial to that root? And I'm just going to just lift it up. I'm resting a little bit against second molar in that region. And there we are. Get some pressure in. And you can see just about there we are. That root is now coming out. And this is where it took me a little bit by surprise uh, to see that little kink on the root, which I didn't really spot on the x-ray initially. So there we are. The two roots are out, and that was a successful wisdom tooth extraction in the end. Uh, I was, I wouldn't say panicking, but I was a little bit concerned. Will I be able to get that distal root out? But I was. All of these tips and tricks and the confidence I gained to remove wisdom teeth surgery really exploded when I did Neki Jamal's online course on wisdom teeth. So his course, what I love about it is not only is just really thorough and sort of great video content, before any wisdom tooth that I take out now, surgically, I'll always go to his course uh, a couple of days before and I'll look at his bank of videos and I'll try and find a case that's similar to the one that I'll be removing and I'll watch that video all the way through. So he shows for every video how to raise a flap, uh, the, any hiccups that he finds, sectioning techniques uh, and everything you can imagine for that specific case. And he's got loads of these cases, case after case after case. So Neki Jamal's course has been brilliant uh, and it's something that I am proud to recommend to my colleagues. It's something that you can get a discount by using the code protrusive or just hit the link below in the comments and that discount has already been applied to you. So a hat tip to Dr. Neki Jamal for making such a fantastic resource for dentists who want to improve their skills in wisdom teeth exodonture. Anyway guys, thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. I hope you found it useful. Please be sure to hit subscribe and give me a thumbs up below and maybe leave a comment uh, describing what your challenges are with wisdom teeth. What other kind of videos do you want? Thank you.